early morning in Rantambore National Park, northern India, and a young Bengal tigress is on the prowl. Satra, aged almost two and a half, has begun to hone her killer instincts. Six months ago, she started hunting on her own. The crucial first step to self-sufficiency. Satra spots a potential victim. But success depends on timing. She lacks experience. It will come. Until then, the deer gets to live another day. But it's not just dinner Sartre's after. She hungers to control a whole kingdom. She already stands out from her two sisters. More detached, more independent more dangerous. Second sister Atara has a cat's curiosity, but not its courage. And Unis, their mother's favorite, is the most timid of all. Adult tigers are solitary creatures. At just over two years old, they'll soon need to strike out and find territories of their own. Or they can fight for the right to stay here, but that won't be easy. A formidable opponent stands in their way. Their mother, Machli, Queen of Rantambore. Her remarkable ten-year rule has won her fame throughout India. Aged three, she claimed the throne in daring but classic style. By deposing and banishing her own mother, And she's fought ever since, defending the Rantambore Fort territory with all her might, laying her life on the line. Tigers usually can defend their throne for only seven to eight years. Matchley's extraordinary ten-year reign attests to her courage and tenacity. And the battle's worth fighting, because the stakes here are so high. Rantambore is one of the best tiger territories in India. Centred round the 1,000-year-old fort, the landscape provides ample food and water almost all year round. The Rajbarg lake below attracts the prey the big cats need. Sambar, spotted deer and wild boar. The National Park, over 400 square kilometers of wilderness, is one of the last great tiger sanctuaries of northern India. It's a haven for other wildlife too. Within this paradise, Matchley's produced five litters and raised nine cubs to adulthood. But none of them dared stay. Until now. With these new cubs, a new regime. At 13, the Great Queen has reached her twilight years. Five years past her prime, she can't muster the strength she once had. And Sartre knows it. For now, Matchley basks in her fading glory. But 
maybe she senses the end is near. Young Satra, the dominant daughter, already samples the perks of this tiger paradise. And she's sharpening her skills all the time. Matchley has taught her the hunting fundamentals. The rest is up to Satra. but eventually she catches a fawn. Each success increases her independence and feeds her ambition. Of the three sisters, she'll be the first one ready to establish her own territory. And Satra plans to stay right here, in the only home she's ever known, even if it means war. As the months pass, Satra grows confident enough to make the first move in her bid for power. But not against her mother. Not yet. She will have to deal with her family one by one. Starting with the weakest. Unis, the most timid, is relaxing in the heat of the day. Satra has her in her sights. She's an easy target. As cubs, the sisters probably stalked each other in play fights, so Unis has no sense of danger. Lulled into a false sense of security, Unis plays along. Satra's made her intentions very clear, and she stalks away. The days of innocent sibling rivalry are over. Satra will continue to bully her like this. Unis is now at the mercy of her determined sister. The balance of power within the family has started to shift. With her first victory, Satra is one step closer to claiming the crown. Unis, defeated and disheartened, slinks off to find the rest of her family. She seeks comfort from her other sister, Atara.
Sartre's violent swipe was no empty threat. Unis knows if she stays here, she risks further attacks. Unis has no choice. She'll need to find a new territory. This may be the last time these two sisters are together. Queen Matchley relaxes, unconcerned or unaware of Sartre's plot against her. She's no stranger to conflict and has always crushed her adversaries. These days, crocodiles pose the biggest natural threat. Mugger crocs can grow up to four and a half meters long and weigh over 400 kilos. Matchley has always taught her cubs to keep alert by the water's edge, where the crocs have the advantage. She learned from painful experience. In 2008, Matchley battled a crocodile for food. And her front teeth were torn out. No longer able to rip into large carcasses, Matchley mainly sticks to small prey. She survives because she's tough and adaptable. But now she's old and her ambitious daughter might even be tougher. After her fight with Sartre, Unis leaves. She stays within Rantambor National Park, but she's a stranger in strange surroundings. The timid tiger has never ventured out on her own beyond the lake territory. Unis needs to find a new home, hopefully near her mother's. But it's a rite of passage fraught with danger. Late afternoon, back in the Fort Territory. Cunning Sartre stalks her next rival. Her other sister, Atara. But Atara doesn't let her guard down, foiling Sartre's plans for a surprise attack. And with Matchley around, she'd be a fool to even try. But Sartre will bide her time. She waits. And waits. Eventually, Atara drops her guard. And Sartre seizes her chance.
No contact, no blood. Sartre's charge declares her dominance. Two down, one to go. Atara won't risk injury. Like Unis, she'll need to move on. Just a few days after her defeat, fate takes a hand. Atara, along with a young male and another female tiger, get caught and tranquilized by the Rajasthan Forest Department. Game wardens are relocating the young healthy tigers to Sariska National Park, 140 kilometers away. The forest department hopes to repopulate the park, where tigers were wiped out by poachers. Big cats have trouble adapting to unfamiliar territory. But officials have chosen the safest place to release Atara. Tranquilized and caged, she makes the 40-minute journey to her new home. If she can steer clear of poachers, Atara has a good chance of a new life. And her departure clears the way for Sartre's endgame. Poaching and habitat loss have reduced the tiger population to dangerously low levels. The World Wildlife Fund estimates there may only be 3,200 left. 40% of those live in India, and 40 of these precious big cats prowl Rantambore National Park. Tigers mean big money for ecotourism and poachers. Park authorities do what they can to stamp out illegal tiger hunting. But it's hard to protect these secretive creatures. For more than 10 years, Matchley has avoided poachers and fended off rivals. And now, her biggest threat comes from her own kin. With both sisters gone, Sartre has only one thing standing between her and control of this piece of paradise, her mother. Sartre doesn't expect an easy fight this time. Matchley is old, but she has skill and experience. The Fork Territory covers 35 square kilometers, but there's room for only one Tiger Queen. Sartre must choose her moment very carefully. The stakes cannot be higher. Sartre has everything to gain, and Matchley everything to lose. After today, nothing will be the same. repeating itself. As she deposed her mother, Sartre has vanquished her. Matchley's dynasty will continue through Sartre, who will banish her from the land she once ruled. A 
At the great age of 13, Matchley will have to find a new domain. She has only ever known the Lush Lake Territory with its easy prey. In the far reaches of the park where she'll have to go, she'll face new competition for food. But for her daughter, life just got better. Sartre, aged two and a half, has won the crown of the Queen of Rantambor. All the joys it offers will be hers for the taking. She is the most powerful creature here. And with no other tigers to challenge her, it's easy living. Sartre crushed all opposition. a kingdom. Nine kilometers away from the fort, her mother struggles with a life in exile. She hasn't eaten for days. To find enough food, Matchley must control a territory of 10 to 40 square kilometers. And it's vital she discovers a water source. It doesn't help that she's not the only big cat here. also hunt in these hills. Both big cats depend on wild boar and sambar. Tigers are stronger than leopards, but Matchley, old and slow, can't compete against them for food. Even worse, her wandering lead her into the dangerous domain of a male tiger. She may spend weeks finding a safe place to settle. Sartre's reign continues. So far she's enjoyed a peaceful rule. No more fights. But the park wardens have fixed her with a radio collar. It transmits a signal so they can monitor her movements. The brazen queen ventured beyond the fort boundaries and into poaching territory, and the collar will help to keep her safe, at least from human threats. Not far away, a different kind of danger is approaching. A young male called Atias. He's come courting, lured by the scent of a female in heat. When females are ready to mate, a smell is stronger. Atias can follow scent markings and roars from up to two kilometers away, a path to a potential mate. And today, that's Unis. Within a few hours, he finds her. Both lack experience. And Atias isn't fully adult, so won't be able to father cubs yet. But you can't fault him for trying. They may mate up to 50 times a day. It 
It's a tiring business. Tigers have several partners over their lifetime. Atias is likely to stay with Unis for a few days. But since this isn't his territory, he'll soon move on. Next to the Rajbagh Lake, Queen Satra patrols her domain, perfuming her path as she goes. Like her sister, she wants to attract a mate, but inviting a suitor into her lush kingdom could bring more than she'd bargained for. And who picks up her signals? None other than Atias. Following the trail, he closes in on her domain. Since winning this territory, Sartre fortunately hasn't had to tangle with any male tigers, which are always heavier and stronger. Luring one onto her turf might be a mistake. Their paths finally cross. Sartre succumbs to Atias's advances. In the throes of tiger passion, she flings caution to the wind. Because Atias isn't sexually mature, his attempts may be more futile than fertile. But for Sartre, this could be a dangerous liaison. Atias might want more than just a mate. He might want Sartre's entire kingdom. Lucky Atias has stumbled into a prized territory without any resident males and with two young single females nearby. It's every male tiger's dream. Why should he think of moving any place else? Sartre keeps polishing her hunting skills. The young queen of Rantambor still has a lot to learn. trespassing on her land. And now he's found her stash of food, he polishes it off. Sartre's hard-won paradise faces a serious threat. And the timing couldn't be worse. The annual monsoon is sweeping up from the south. the downpour comes upheaval. Over 80 centimeters of rain can fall in four months, flooding Rantambor from June to September. But before the deluge comes the exodus. 
both predator and prey leave the fort for higher ground. It's the worst time of the year for hunting and the tigers usually head out too. But Sartre stays put. If she leaves her kingdom now, Atias could make his move and she might never be allowed to return. And so Sartre must ride out the storm for four lean, wet months. Problems rain down on others as well. Away from the lake, Matchley is also struggling. She has little food, little shelter, and hasn't found the territory of her own yet. She'll need to muster all her strength to survive the monsoon. Finally, the rain passes and the floods subside. Animals return to the lake. And Atias, who hasn't shown his face for months, returns bolder than ever. But Sartre can't spend all her time defending her boundaries. She needs to eat. And while she's out hunting away from the lake, there's nothing to stop Atias moving in. He's staking out all the prime places, including Sartre's favorite spots. Hunting takes hard work, skill and luck. Even at her best, Sartre bags only one in every 15 targets. The hungry tigress can't afford to make mistakes. She catches a young spotted deer, but still has a problem. Where to hide it from Atias' greedy eyes? He's starting to know her territory as well as she does. She decides the long reeds by the water's edge are the best place. She decides the long reeds by the water's edge are the best place. But it's too late. Matthias seems to have heard the commotion of the hunt. Stealthily, he closes in on Sartre. He doesn't want confrontation, just dinner. Sartre senses he's coming. She too wants to avoid a battle. So she retreats, reluctantly abandoning her half-eaten meal. Atias spends over an hour scouting the wetlands. He doesn't find what he's looking for, but he'll keep trying. Back 
in the Fort Territory, Queen Sartre finds her regal role unsettling. Taking the land from her weakened mother is one thing, holding on to it quite another. She tries to rest by a banyan grove, but can't. Then she sees what she feared. Atias, the bold and persistent intruder, acting like he owns the place. He's in the heart of her domain. Sartre's had enough. If she doesn't defend her territory now, she will lose it. Mustering the family courage, she decides to take him on. She's never challenged a male before. But she's determined to face her fear. Heavyweight Atias knows she's nearby and prepares himself for battle. Queen Sartre will never share her domain. Atias heads to a clearing ready for Sartre to bring it on. Today the Queen faces the ultimate test. A dynasty hangs in the balance. Sartre is going to confront him at any cost. final moment, she backs down. Over 250 kilos of brute force is just too intimidating. She offers a mating position, but Atias doesn't care. He's got what he wants. Atias takes his victory walk. Sartre is left lying in the dust. Her royal dreams are over. Like the mother and sisters Sartre drove out, she too faces exile. Ironically, her weaker siblings have done much better than her. Timid Unis, the late bloomer, established a new domain behind the fort and grows more confident by the day. And Atara thrives in Sariska National Park, where she controls a territory of over 50 square kilometers. Their mother, the once great Queen Matchley, has only her reputation. And she cannot live off that. Finding food remains a challenge. She tries to hunt deer calves, the easiest prey of all. She can't even catch them off guard. Matchley is broken, hungry and tired. Reduced to scavenging, she discovers the remains of an old kill. But it won't sustain her for long.
future looks bleak. Now, for the first time in over a decade, Rantambor has a king. Atias won the best territory in India. He'll enjoy the riches of Tiger Paradise, at least until another challenger comes along. But for now, his future looks secure. Sartre is the loser. She didn't have the strength to take on a male. After only nine months, she's been knocked from her throne. Her courage and ambition had taken her far. But she couldn't hold on to the land she had won. Now the deposed queen must make a fresh start in a strange land. Finding some small portion of this big wilderness to claim as her own. She's still young, and her prime years lie ahead. This one-time tiger queen might even reclaim her kingdom and restore her dynasty. Sartre lives to fight another day.